Are you using Microsoft Loop yet? Here's an easy way to help your organization start to use Microsoft Loop in one of the most common ways that we work together, within meetings. Now, uh, Microsoft Loop is coming to Teams meetings in a more integrated experience. Uh, you'll see it come into meeting invites, it'll have OneNote as part of its story, and you'll be able to use the, the Loop experience directly within the meeting. But today, you can start using Loop in your meetings. I'm going to step through how to add Loop to that meeting experience today, and we'll, we'll start that preparation, then we'll go into a meeting, and we'll work together with people in the meeting as part of that experience. So let's start by creating a meeting invite. Here's a meeting invite that I have ready to send. There's nothing new here, uh, but later there will be uh, a place where you'll see meeting notes and guidance around the integrated experience for the invite. And OneNote will be part of that too. So I'll just send this invite as it is. I'll just put a note there to say, see the loop for meeting uh, agenda and notes. And we'll add that soon. Let's send the meeting invite. Now as we send the invite, it is actually creating a space where we can start to have conversations. Um, this is the meeting chat. Um, so we'll go into uh, the meeting to begin with. And we'll just point out that the, now there's the chat up here as we load it. So we do have chat. It's added people who have been invited to the meeting. Uh, but what we don't have down here at the moment in public preview uh, is the loop uh, button to be able to add to the chat. You do have to visit the chat application within Microsoft Teams to see that. So as we go up to see our meeting here, uh, then now we can see the loop components button that we can add to a Teams chat or to the meeting chat. Okay, I'm going to add a loop component, and I'm going to choose the paragraph loop. Um, and this is because it allows me to give some context about the rest of the uh, content I'm going to add to the loop. Um, so I'm going to start by using the same um, subject for the team meeting. And uh, by doing that, this is going to give the loop file a name in the background so it all matches. Um, so we have that. We're also going to change the permissions on the loop so that when the link is copied that it will be uh, available to people who are currently in the chat and will allow editing. And later we'll use this to share that with other people that might have been added to the meeting invite. Let's add a paragraph to give some of this some context. Great. Um, and this is where we start to add some of the structure and content to what we want on our loop page because we don't just stop at the paragraph, uh, we can add other things to it. So I'm going to add a agenda. We'll use the forward slash and type agenda. And so that's going to give us a simple list of uh, topics and things that we can um, add to uh, the list. We'll also add a section for meeting notes. So I'm going to just add some text to that and we'll double click this, we'll select it and then choose just a heading one so that I can uh, give it a bit of um, definition within the structure there. Um, we'll also add a bulleted list. So remember I can forward slash and just type bulleted list and then that's my items or meeting items. Now one of the other ways that we could take notes is not just as a bulleted item but I might want to um, add a table. And this way, uh, with a table, um, it means that I can um, have a place for notes. I can also identify the item that we were discussing at the time. So let's start off with that item and the column name, um, notes. Um, we'll also add people. Uh, so this is where it, it's we're mentioning the person that's uh, related to this discussion or this note, and maybe a column for an outcome. Now this means that each new row will be a note, and so we can add more rows and more notes as we go, and we can drag them into a different order as well as we can um, you know, shuffle things around here within the table. So tables are going to be very useful, very flexible as a way of uh, taking notes and recording information. 
Uh, we've got a space for meeting notes, so that's good. Uh, we'll also add a place for questions. This is a good one to have um, where we might want to have uh, some questions that have been asked during the meeting and we need to go back and research them. So it's kind of like a task, but it also might be a place to just capture those questions and research them. Okay. And lastly, we'll add a section or a loop component for tasks. So this is going to be part of the, um, the full experience when it comes into a meeting invite, but it's effectively the same thing. We're adding a task table, and I'll just change that to the title of it to follow up tasks. Great, so we do have um, a nice loop page there that's going to be useful for collaborating with our meeting attendees. And as we send it off, then it becomes available to people who have been invited to the meeting and it becomes live. So now people can start to add and adjust things like the agenda and the like there too. I'll, I'll add an agenda in there now. So there are a few things that we want to do. I'll mention my name because I'll lead that, that item. And we'll give that item about 10 minutes. And we'll have a, a section for questions that Laura will uh, lead. Now there is something else that I want uh, people to do um, as part of preparing for this meeting. So we'll just add one more section here. And I want them to be able to read uh, the attached article or the attached file. With, uh, with files, it's, it's best to attach them to the Teams meet, meeting experience. So that's the Files tab, and you would upload or share a file. Uh, so that is then shared from your OneDrive. But eventually, when, uh, it's, uh, when the loop uh, is more fully integrated to, uh, to Teams and to the Files experience, you are going to be able to reference and link to files directly within the loop. And so it's a really great way to curate and collect the files that we might um, need to discuss and work on together as part of the meeting. Conversations before the meeting help to prepare for the meeting and make it more valuable for attendees. An agenda can be added and changed and preparation tasks can be discussed. Additional resources can be shared and using the loop before the meeting can help to keep the meeting preparation in sync and everyone in the loop. So let's take a look at this experience. We'll go through and just demo a few things that might look like how people could prepare and discuss things before a meeting. So I'll just bring up Laura over here too. Um, and so we've got myself on the left and Laura, one of the attendees on the right. Now, because Laura has been invited to the meeting and the chat has already started, uh, then we have the loop there and it's all embedded in as part of that meeting experience and part of the meeting chat. We might just want to uh, unmute that chat as well just so that Laura can get any conversation that's going on um, during, the, during the back and forth as we plan things. So Laura opens up the meeting invite and, and she's right in there and now she's going to add like another, another item because there is a new person that has joined the project team. So Laura's going to do that, and that actually will mean that we'll need to extend the meeting invite to Jack so that he can participate. So Laura will just throw that in the chat there. Hey Daryl, Jack has joined the team. I'll welcome him in the meeting. Now Laura also sees the um, the note there to prepare for the meeting and so she can go up and, and take, check out those files that might have been attached to the Teams uh, chat and the Teams meeting experience. So let's now start that meeting. We'll join it and we'll come back and, and see what this is like as we start to use the, uh, the loop during a meeting experience. So again, just uh, we're back now and just looking, we've got on the left-hand side, that's myself in the meeting with the full Teams desktop client and Laura has joined over on the right and she's joined from a web browser and Matt's in there too. 
So where do we find our loop component? Let's open up the chat within the meeting. And so we've got our chat down the right-hand side, that thin pane there where it's, uh, it's great for chat, but it's not really great for working within a loop because as you can see, it's quite packed and, uh, and squished. So it's better to have this open in a fuller experience. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to use the, um, the loop from the chat as, as part of the, the application. So I've gone into the chat app within Teams and I can see uh, the chat there. Now, Laura, I could um, also open the conversation. Um, you'll see that her experience is a bit different within Teams within the web browser. There's just a link there to Live Component. Um, so a better way for Laura to do this from the web browser is that she will open up the Live Component and it opens up with an office.com. So it's a bit like opening Word, Excel, or PowerPoint in the web browser, and she can now edit the loop directly from that experience. So the good thing about having the loop open during a meeting is that we can all be focused on uh, the notes, and we can also glance over and take a look at each other as, as we're uh, communicating so that we, we don't miss anything. Uh, but this way we can all take the notes collaboratively as we're within the meeting. So I highly recommend that the organizer open up those notes uh, at the beginning of the meeting. It, it sets the tone that we are working together, we're taking notes and you know as along alongside a presentation, but it's also there and uh, ready to go. Now if there's been a lot of conversation that has occurred between the time the invite went out and uh, and we've started the meeting, maybe this chat thread is is quite um, you know, uh, developed now, and the loop will actually disappear <laughs> off the off the chat feed. It'll be up there further up. But uh, a good thing to do uh, to try and you know bring that to the forefront as well is just to copy the link to that loop again, and then go down to our uh, most recent, or just type in another reply to this chat thread and send that off. Um, now, if if we've invited Jack and other people to the meeting, we've extended that meeting invite. Um, at this point, we can then change the permissions or select the permissions again and choose people currently in the chat and apply. And that will include anyone who has been added to the invite and is, is um, now you know, new and part of that experience within the meeting. It means they can open the loop and also contribute to that loop. The good thing about having an agenda uh, that's up, up front and center in this loop is that we can use it to lead the, uh, the items as we go through. So um, we might be reviewing the current feedback from the client, so Daryl leads that, yep, that's done. Um, we've had a team, a round of team reports about the tasks and various things that have been done for 15 minutes. And then maybe Laura's um, starting to get to that section where um, we can ask questions. Now, um, with the integrated experience that will be coming to Teams and Microsoft Loop, if we just go back to our meeting, you're going to see that here in the uh, left-hand side. You've probably seen it in some of the marketing videos there where you can see a list of an agenda, you can take some notes below that, and then there's some follow-up tasks. So it is going to be there and visible within the meeting. However, I do hope that already, even before it's arrived, that um, we can have that fuller experience, have it as a, as a full page, a bit like how I've done um, over in the, in the Teams app. So we'll switch back to that. Now as we're taking notes um, and we've done the, the round of talking about our tasks, then I'm going to add a note here that Matt's mentioned that he um, uh, is having trouble sourcing some branding guidelines from the client. Um, so uh, that has been uh, delayed and needs follow-up. All right, so Matt can... Um, from Matt, so we'll just mention Matt here. But Matt's going to uh, respond to that, and he will go into um, the tasks section of the uh, the loop, and he'll go down and add a task in here for himself. What's helpful about this is we can add tasks as we're discussing them, so it's fresh in the mind, and if someone is responsible for that task, it's good to get them to write it down in the follow-up task lists 
uh, so that they've got it in mind and they're also taking ownership of what their task is. Now Laura's going to also add a task there to extend the client meeting to Jack. And I'm going to add prepare status meeting slide deck. While we're in the meeting and we're talking about tasks, we get to the end of the meeting, we can start to prioritize them and, and uh, just clarify them too. So uh, Laura, you know, we can drag that up in the table. This is the great thing about it being a task table. And uh, we'll put mine a bit further up there too. So those are all prioritized and ready to action after the meeting. And so Look, the great thing about this all being a, a live and collaborative experience is that the meeting notes and the follow-up tasks and everything take care of themselves as long as people are participating and uh, collaborating and adding to the loop. Now, as mentioned earlier, that experience is going to be integrated into the team meeting experience and also uh, when we create the meeting invite. But you can see from today that you can start to use Microsoft Loop for your meetings to take notes and to coordinate some of the activities and tasks uh, and keep everyone on the same page as they say. And if you're keen to see more of this kind of content as we explore Microsoft Loop as more of it becomes available and anything else around the modern workplace experience within Microsoft 365, you know where to find me, you know what to do. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.